Okay, good morning, class. So, uh, by the way, this is the continuation of the third session. Our goal in this part is to finish the module four. So, let us start. And I'm going to share my screen to you. Uh, just wait for a sec. Right? Can you see my screen now? Right, so, we ended here in the slide. So, this is entitled Another New Operator. The operator we want to introduce now is distinguish by its appearance. The operators we've encountered so far have been coded as single characters or diag diagrams. This new operator looks like a variable. Don't be fooled. Uh, this is a unary prefix operator and with the highest possi possible priority. There's another difference too. A typical operator requires a value as its argument and usually changes the value in certain ways. The new operator expects that its argument is a literal, literal or a variable or an expression enclosed in a parenthesis or the type name. This is uh, the only C operator which allows its argument to be a type. The operator provides uh, information on how many bytes of memory its argument occupies or may be occupied. Uh, the name explains the purpose here. So here in the snippet, the reserve word is size of. Note, there is no space between size and of. So the size of is not only an operator, it is also a reserve keyword. A variable i will be assigned a value of 1 because um, char values always occupy one byte. Note that we can achieve the same effect by writing i is equals to size of the car or char. You may not use parentheses when the argument is a literal, literal or a value, but you must use them when the argument is a type. int i semicolon char c semicolon and then we declare here as i is equals to size of the c. So the following example is not so obvious. I, uh, int i semicolon, i is equals to size of i values of the int type occupy 32 bits. Bit, uh, bytes is in most modern compilers or computers, but we cannot uh, guarantee that this is true in all cases. So it will also, uh, always depend on the compiler that we all uh, we are going to use. So let's have the next slide. Analyze the program provided in the editor. It would probably be a good exercise for you to compile and run it on your own computer. Uh, from this, you will learn how your computer and compiler use the memory. The program isn't too tricky, but its role is to identify interesting features of your environment, and it's good enough for this purpose. Okay, uh, for uh, it is time for us to update the priority table. So here's the uh, updated priority table. Can you see it? Uh, study it carefully. It will come very handy soon. Right. So this is the updated. Um, priority table All right so here as you can see we have a uh, uh, source code here in the editor and we can run it or we can try it on our own so as you can see we have the uh, an error as you can see in the um, edit um, console so what do you think is the error of this uh, code. Okay, let's check it on the next slide. Right, so, I think it's, it was not uh, explained. All right, so uh, let's take a look first in this slide, pointers and arrays comparison. What do pointers and arrays have in common? Well, a lot, Let's start with an important definition. If you see the same, in, if you see the name of an array without the indices, then it's always a synonym of the pointer pointing to the first element of the array. How does it work? Look at the snippet below. So here, how is it work? 
int and then asterisk ptr or the pointer then comma and then the array r uh, arr and then three so uh, which is the initiator we've declared a pointer to int and the three element array of type in the two assignments that follow the declaration set ptr to the same value in other words the following comparison r equals equals ampersand r and then zero is always true so here's the code int then asterisk pdr comma uh, initiator arr array three ptr is equals ampersand r and then zero pdr is equals to arr the figure below illustrates the effect of the assignment so this is how it works and then PDR going to ARR0 and then uh, until ARR2. Right, so let's have the next slide. So, here uh, in this slide, it talks about the arithmetic of pointers. The arithmetic pointer is significantly different. From the arithmetic of integers take note of that as it's relatively reduced and allows the following operation only first adding an integer value to a pointer giving a pointer or how to do that pdr plus int and then pdr subtracting an integer value from a pointer giving a pointer pdr minus int going to pointer or pdr Subtracting a pointer from a pointer, giving an integer PDR minus PDR to PDR. Comparing the two um, pointer, comparing the two pointer for equality or inequality, this gives a value of in, a type of in, or either true or false. PDR equals equals PTR, then going to in, PTR not equal, PTR, and then int. Any other operations are either prohibited or meaningless, and only the ones mentioned above may be used. Let's discuss briefly what's happening to a pointer uh, subjected to these operations. We'll do this by assuming the declarations and assignments shown in the editor. At this point, PTR1 points to the first element of array. Okay, so in this uh, point of time, the PDR1 points the first element in the array. So here, another slide, arithmetic of pointers. After the following assignment, a PDR points to the first element of array. Two, the figure shows the current states of variable. PTR2 is equals to PTR1. So how does it look? This is uh, uh, the figure for PTR2 equals PTR, uh, PTR1. So what we can check if the pointer, if the two pointer are equal. Yes, they are as they point to the same element of the array. So if PTR1 at two is equals 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 PTR1, and then inside this would be the statement, right? So let's check how the addition works. This uh, statements do the same operation, the add one to PDR2. We can interpret this operation as follows. First, it has taken into account what type is pointed to uh, by the pointer in our example, it's int. It has determined how many bytes of memory the type occupies. The size of a grader is used automatic, automatically for the for that purpose. In in our case, it's size of and then int. The value we want to add to the pointer is multiplied by the given size. The address uh, which is stored in the pointer is increased by resulting the product. Right, so here, in effect, the pointer moves itself to the next int value in the memory. The effect of this is incrementation is shown in the figure below. So here's the incrementation uh, equation, PDR2 is equal to PTR2 plus 1. 
And then we have another increment here, which is PDR2++. So these figures uh, show how it will work or the flow of the statement. So what would happen if we added two instead of one? In this case, the PDR2 would be increased by two times size of int and thus PDR2 would move two int values and would point to the third element of the array name, namely array2. The comparison PTR2 equals equals PDR1, I mean equals equals PDR2 is obviously false while this one PDR1 is not equal to PDR2 is true as the address as the pointers point to differ. All right, so let's have the next slide. Uh, here, in this uh, next slide, we, we will talk about, uh, we will continue about the pointers. Now let's uh, subtract the pointers in the following way. We said earlier that the subtraction, sub, subtraction gives a result of type in. How is it calculated? Taken into account, the type to which the pointer point in this means that both pointers need to point to the same type the compiler will check it the address the addresses stored in the pointers are subtracted the result of the subtraction is divided by the size of the type pointed to by the pointers the final result tells us how many variables of a given type fit between the addresses stored in the pointers. In our case, it's obviously one and this value will be assigned to the i variable. So take note of that, that the, uh, that the value of, uh, of uh, one, which is uh, the value one, will be assigned to uh, variable i. So here, i is equals to pdr2 minus pdr1. So this the result will be greater than zero if PDR2 points to the memory located after PT, PTR1. Otherwise, it will be less than zero. Try to guess result of the following operation. So PDR1 equals PDR1 plus 2. You can find the answer below. So uh, how can you figure out the, this uh, equation? Uh, this, I mean, this is statement, PDR1 equals PDR2. Okay, so this is how it looks, this uh, f figure. Right, so let's assume the following operation has been performed. Can you guess the effect? PDR2 is equals to PDR2 minus one. Here's the answer. So here's the figure uh, figure for that um, uh, the effect of the uh, statement above. So here, and try to determine the, the result of the following subtraction. So how about uh, its subtraction, PDR1 minus PDR2, it is 2? Yes, it is. All right, so what do you think? Uh, what do you think it, it is number 2? All right, so for arrays of characters, the strings, okay, this is another a part of this um, module, which is the string, a very special vector. Array, arrays of characters, the string, a characters array are treated in special way. We've added declare an array like this. So char protagonist uh, 10, this array is capable of storing uh, 10 characters. Do you know that uh, we can uh, use similar tables of its kind for, well, there are indens indispensable whenever we need to process text. The most obvious example is personal data processing, first name, last name, places of residence, etc. And these values are called strings. Our array is an example of a string. Imagine that we, that we are going to use it to store the name of the to our favorite uh, protagonist. At the moment, we're going, we're wondering if it's Bilbo or Potter. Now we have questions to answer. The table has a room for 10 characters. 
Bilbo is five characters long and Potter is six. How do we know in advance how many characters we want to put in an array? And when we put in, in it there, there, how do we know how many characters are really used? How do we discover where the end of the text which has been assigned to the array is? We cannot use the size of operator for this purpose. I will tell uh, us it will tell us how many characters are occupied by the entire array, but won't tell us how many of them we are actually used to store the name. This issue is this issue is solved in the C language in a special way. I have a string must end with a special tag, something like flag waving in the wind of wind and announcing here it is the end of the string. All subsequent characters have no meaning. This role is played by the character with an axi code equal to zero. This code does not represent any visible characters and doesn't have any meaning, meaning for the input or output devices. So according to the language conventions, the terminating tag is denoted in the following way. So take note that it is zero, not the letter O. So here, as you can see, uh, it is written as single code, uh, open single code and backslash zero, and then uh, closing single code. We call this character an empty character or null. Don't be focused, it has nothing to do with the null pointer. The, conf the convention, though easy to use and understand, has one significant flaw. Uh, since we must use one character to indicate where the string ends, it means that we can only use nine characters for storing the, for storing the text. This is the price we pay for the convenience. So how does it work? How do we store the name of our Hobbit hero in the array? There are several methods. The first is very inconvenient and we only want to show you it, it in order to discourage you from doing it yourself. We can store the entire name by storing each character using a separate assignment as shown below. So here, um, by storing name, uh, you can store the entire name by storing each other using this as snippet uh, example here. Protagonist zero is equals B. Protagonist one is equals to I. Protagonist two is equals to L. Protagonist three is equals to B. Protagonist four is equals to zero. Protagonist five is equals to backslash zero or no. Go to the character return the sixth element of the array. We can initialize a character ar array in the same way as any other array like this. Char protagonist 10, B, I, L, B, O, then backslash 0. Take note that every character have a single code, uh, open and close single code in each character. Unfortunately, we cannot do this in the regular in the regular assignment. So in the regular assignment, uh, we cannot do this. Um, cannot do this um, initializing the character the character array. There's another method for initializing characters arrays. Don't forget it only works with characters array. You must not use it for kinds other kinds of array. So this is what it looks like. So um, here, um, it is char protagonist ten and equals to Bilbo without single, uh, without single code in each. But we have, uh, we have double code but without curly brackets here. All right, so take note of that. So you probably want to ask the following question: Where is the ending tag? Did you forget? No, we did it. So this would probably the other um, the other uh, syntax for this one. So so you don't need to uh, type it one by one, just like this one, right? So let's have strings. 
could be pointers. Whenever a string appears in the program like the one here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, the compiler threads, uh, treats in, in, it in a very special way and performs the following step. So here's the step. The first one is compiler count how many characters are inside the string. In our example, it is 10. So the compiler reserves the memory for the strings. Uh, but gets one character more than the string's length. In our example, there will be 11 bytes in use for the string. The compiler copies the entire string from our source code into, this, into the reserved memory and appends an empty character at the end. So pay attention. This is the most important step. This is the last step. The compiler checks the string as a pointer to the reserved memory. So don't forget a string is stored as a sequence of characters followed by empty characters but behaves as a pointer of type which is char and then asterisk. So we can now go back uh, to arrays. So Right, so here's the initializing initializing strings. So the string in initialization initializations have another interesting ex extensions. Extension, take a look at the code in the editor. It seems that we forget to uh, provide information about the array size, leaving only two empty brackets. So here's an empty bracket, but don't worry, everything's okay. This means that we want the compiler itself to count the characters. So the compiler itself will count the characters in, uh, inside a value. The compiler will add an empty character to the string, and the declaration works the same as this one, as this snippet. Car protagonist is the So uh, note that the array size is larger than initiator length by one. Okay, so take note of that. Uh, array size is larger than uh, initi initiator length by one. Uh huh. So here, so assigning values, can we use the same clear methods to assign a string to the character's arrays? So unfortunately not. If you write something like this, the compiler will not be pleased. Why the compiler is the following? There's a character array in the left side of the equal operator and the opposite side there. Uh, uh, on the opposite side, there's a string. We know it's a value of type char. As there is, it would seem that everything's okay since as we said earlier, the name of the array is interpreted as a pointer to the first element therefore both arguments of the equal operator are pointers of the same type so what's the problem in fact protagonist is a pointer of type char asterisk but the pointer has been designed to point to only one location in the memory the one which stores the protagonist array and nothing else the pointer cannot be changed this assignment tries to Force the compiler to change the meaning of the pointer so uh, the compiler is not going to back down on this so making these types of assignment is simply not allowed right so let's have the continuation so that's this means that we have to separately assign each of the characters so what will we do if our favorite protagonist is for example the king Nebuchadnezzar so unfortunately there's a faster and more convenient solution so there's a function that makes this task so much easier we will show you how it works and how we can use similar functions don't worry a detailed explanation is coming soon so this function is called strcpy so it's a conflation of two words of string and copy so we can invoke in the it in the following way look at the editor so by analogy to the equal operator the left argument is the one to which the string is to be copied and the right is one which is being copied so character protagonist is equal to snape 
The C language provides a rich set of functions that operates on string and we will introduce some of them soon. Right, so a very important distinction. So now we want to show you a very important distinction. Pay attention to the examples. First, let us discuss the declaration provided in the editor. You are you are already you already know that it is uh that is the result of the file in the following. So an array of 10 characters will be created. So here, here in this, uh, in this statement, uh, the following characters F, R, O, D, O, and uh, backslash zero or now will be stored in the variable. And whenever, whenever you use the name protagonist it will be interpreted interpreted as a pointer to be the first element the one that contains the letter f right so that would be the very important at distinction so here's uh another part of assigning values to string. And now for something completely different, take a look at the code in the editor. So this is char, then as there is a hero equals Dumbledore. The Dumbledore is the value here. All right, so it's, it uh, looks like quite similar, but the effects will be significantly different. So this is what will happen. So the compiler reserves the memory of 11 bytes 10 for the hero's name itself and plus one for empty char or the null and it fills it with the character d-u-m-b-l-e-d-o-r-e and then null so the compiler creates a variable name hero of a type uh, char asterisk so the compiler assigns the pointer to a newly reserved string to the hero variable so here Let's have, okay, so let's try this. Hero is equals to Sirius, as uh, Sirius. Uh, we don't expect that there will be any problems. The compiler will perform the following steps. So uh, here's the step. The first step is reserve seven bytes for the new string and fill it with Sirius and ending with an empty character. So store the pointer of the newly created string in the hero variable. So the uh, regular pointer variable, in contrast to the array name, is a valid all value, right? So it is a valid uh, value, right? So here, so we can use st, uh, strcpy or string copy function like this. Here uh, in this snippet example, uh, yes, we can. So the strcpy has no intention of changing the ball, the pointer's value. Uh, it only copies the string uh, peepin along with its empty character into the location pointed to the hero variable. So note that we have to make sure that the string being copied is not longer than the target array. The compiler won't check it. It is up to you. So there are two important things that we that you have to consider before you can use the string copy or strcpy. So do you know for sure where the left argument points to? So is is there sufficient room to accommodate the accommodate the string? So that would be the uh, two important things you have to consider before using strcpy. So, another slide of module four um, is a printing strings. So, how do we print a strings? So, uh, it will certainly be necessary at some point or, or other. We will can, we will we can use well we, we we can use two functions, and you can already know both both of them. What do you think? It is puts and printf, right? So the first is puts, which you might remember from the very beginning of our course. Now, however, uh, we are going to use it more formal way. So the C language functions are described by specifying the prototype. The prototype consists of three 
Uh, so the first is the return type. So the type of the result uh, and the second is the name, the name of the function and the third one is the list of its parameters as well as their type. So the prototype of puts is shown below. So here uh, int puts and then uh, char asterisk s. So this means that puts ex expects uh, only one argument of pointers to the string to be printed. So puts, in, in contrast to printf, automatically append a new line, new line character to the output. So here are the three valid forms of puts invocation. The first valid form is with the name of the character array, just like puts, puts protagonist, and then with the name the pointer of the type, char asterisk, puts a uh, hero and then with the string little literal so here there's the string the boromir with its uh, double coat uh, symbol so character array name of the pointer type and the string literal literal right so here the puts uh, prototype specifies that the function returns as a result of type in what does this mean how do we use the result uh, do we ever use it the c language doesn't force you to use the function result if the value returned uh, by the function is really needed we can make use of it so like in the example editor if we ignore the result uh, in like the second invocation the compiler will not recognize this as an error the value uh, returned by the function will simply be rejected it's not an error uh, here's a brief explanation of the result um, less than puts uh, it's a negative none a negative number if everything goes well and negative one if puts uh, cannot meet our demands due to any reason So the, fa the second function is printf. So take a look at the prototype of the editor. So the mysterious three dots indicate in the arbitrary, including zero numbers, the number including zero number of parameters may appear in their place. So the result of the printf function has a rather original meaning its number of characters that the printf function has successfully uh, sent to the output. So hopefully you can still remember the specifiers because uh, now we're going to show you another one uh, designed specifically to print strings. It is uh, percent %s, where as you may guess, this letter S stands for strings. Yes, it is stands for string. So you can find examples showing how we can use it to print two different strings in the editor. So here, the percent %s, print f uh, inside the uh, double quote, percent %s and print, uh, percent %s, s are the best. So the first uh, vo value that would, uh, the first value would be protagonist and the next one is hero. So probably the answer for this, uh, f the output for this one would be protagonist and hero are the best. So let's have some useful functions. So let us uh, discuss some essential functions that let you work with strings efficiently and smoothly. So firstly, you need to know where their prototypes are taken from. All of them are contained in the header in a header file named string.h hash, hash include uh, string.h. This means that you have to place the following directive in all of your programs that use any of the functions. So don't forget to add this uh, directive or header since uh, this function uh, 
only includes in this header. So if you forgot to uh, add this one, maybe uh, the console will prompt you an error. So uh, we all, so here we also need the following two definitions: the char in string fifty. So the char uh, asters PDR equals computer. For each of the functions, we will provide the following information. So the first one is the function names and the meaning of the name. Next one is the, the function prototype. The third one is a description of functions uh, behavior, including the meaning of the result and the purpose of its parameters. And the last one is an example to use. So how about str, uh, str length, or stands for string length. The string length of the string, or the length of the string. So str len a function is used to count the characters in a string, excluding the empty character at the end. So it excludes, or uh, it, it, will not, uh, it will not be counted. So counting starts from the beginning of the string, and the string of given in the parameter is not modified in any way. So an invocation like this, so str len pdr returns 8 as a result, this one. So uh, str ln uh, double code so, so return zero ka so now can you explain why what do you think guys why it returns as eight as a result so str cpy string copy make a string make a copy of a string so here, as you can see in the editor, it was written, so the strcpy function makes a copy of the point string pointed to, to by source and stores it at the location uh, pointed to by destination. So the string pointed to by the uh, source is not modified, modified in any way. Copying involves all the characters of the string source, including the null character at the end. So the result of the function is the same pointer as the one specified as destination. So an invocation like this, strcpy string pdr, places a copy of string computer at the location pointed to by the variable string. So the invocation, here's the invocation, uh, stpry, so the string is Alice has a cat causes the string array to contain the, uh, the phrase Alice has a cat along with a closing null character. So it is always a commit, uh, it, was, it is always uh, includes a null value after the, um, after the string. So strn cpy. So this is another, um, this is another keyword, which is, uh, which means a string and copy. So make an n long copy of a string. So the strncpy function makes a copy of a maximum n characters taken from the string pointed to by source and stores and stores them in the location pointed by the destination. The string pointed to by source is not modified in any way. If source contains fewer characters than n, all of them are copied. So the following, the, fi the finishing null character is only added to the copied string if this character is in n range. So the result is the same uh, pointer that was specified as the destination. An invocation like this, strn cpy, str string pdr then free was the array string with the uh, uh, letters uh, c, o, and then m. So the invocation str cpy string how Alice as a cat fills the array string with the string Alice. So how about SDR CAT or CAT? This stands for string concatenation. To append a string to another string, the SDR CAT function 
appends a copy to the string pointed to by source to end the string appointed to by destination, then all character uh, that orig originally closes destination is removed. Then a copy of source is appended to destination along with its closing null character. The string pointed to by source is not modified in any way. The result of the function is a pointer that was specified as the par parameter destination, the sequence of instruction. So here, strcpy, a string pdr, and then strcad, or for concatenation string pdr. It causes the string, uh, the array string to contain computer, computer followed by the null character. So this sequence of instructions, str cpy string alice, str cat, concatenation string has no, and then uh, str cat string pdr. So fills the array string, uh, alice has no computer. All right, guys, so uh, that would be the uh, last uh, slide for the module four and hopefully that you can answer uh, module four quiz and module four uh, test. And I think this is question, uh, we have 10 question, just like uh, module four test. So good luck and have a good day and see you in the uh, fourth session of this uh, program. Have a good day, goodbye.